Hello world and welcome to Elevated Intuition. Today we are talking about your vibe. That's a very vibey reading for your very vibey person. Um, so what vibe do others pick up from you? What are you projecting? What are we putting out there? What is your vibe? I have three options for us because this is a pick a card reading. That means that you get to use your intuition to pick the card number or object. I'll be placing objects here in a moment that vibe with you for your vibe. And then I will use my intuition to read those cards for you. The timestamps are down below in the description. So for group number one, the object that goes with that, we are using points today. And this is chrysocolla in quartz point for group number one. For group number two, this is a quartz point. Uh, it's terminated quartz, which means that we've got this tourmaline that little black thing that goes through it. So um, just minorly terminated, <laughs> but terminated nonetheless. And then for group number three, the point that we have is amethyst. So we have this amethyst point here. If you are not sure which card number, um, timestamp object is for you, that's okay. We're going to set some intentions right now. I'm going to do a breathing exercise and you are in invited to do that with me. So just real quick, I'm just going to close my eyes and invite you to close your eyes and take a deep breath in and release. And we're releasing out any anxiety or any tension. We are setting the intention that you will get and receive the messages that you need to hear today. And we're just going to take another deep breath in and release. And as you open your eyes, wherever your attention, wherever your eyes are drawn, that is the group for you. So thank you so much for being here and I'll see you at your reading. Hello, group one. Let's discuss your vibe, shall we? What kind of vibes are you giving off? So this is Chrysocolla and Quartz Point. Can we see it there? Sure. We'll put the number one over here. And the first card that comes out for you, we have Circe. So Circe is from Greek mythology, the Odyssey. And she is often kind of painted as being evil, but she's not. So I kind of feel like there is, and, and she's also a seductress. Um, I don't feel like you go out looking for trouble, you don't. But if it comes to you, like, you're not going to put up with it. So there's this, this um, seductive and mysterious nature to you as well, um, is what Circe is saying here. And I feel like there's a certain confidence too. Um, so Circe in the Odyssey, the men go, they find her island and they're jerks to her. So she turns them into pigs. But then Odysseus comes in and he becomes her lover for a while. Um, there is also a, an, a an degree of, um, so that's where the seductiveness comes in. And the confidence is in your ability here, but it's not something like you go, you don't go out looking for trouble. You don't like put it out there. Um, and I feel like there are certain like people who just aren't going to mess with you, aren't going to um, push you or test your boundaries because they do see like, ooh, you know, you don't say it, but you project it. And that's, that's the vibe thing. That's what we're talking about. Um, oh, but you are very nice and, and genuine. Like if somebody gets to know you and they do ask you for something, but they have to be polite. Like you're not going to put up with rudeness. And that's the kind of thing that you um, have going on. Maybe introvert here. We've got the six of wands in reverse. 
seven of cups, king of pentacles, and I'm going to get one more card. What else do we have for the five of one? So yeah, you have a lot of choices and a lot of options, I would say. Um, maybe not everything looks great to you. <laughs> you're probably like, I don't have options. You do. It's just that I think that you're very selective in your options and it has to vibe with you. Um, the king of pentacles here, definitely in control and you have a specific confidence. Um, you have the vibe of, you know what you're doing in your job, in your work, in your profession. Um, you come across as somebody who, um, people will seek out for advice in that area. Your coworkers probably look up to you. It doesn't really matter to you that much. Like you might have some victories at work, but it's more of a like, um, you have your own personal goals and I feel like you are your own worst critic. So even though, you know, other people see you as somebody who, who shines, it's not like you are going, it's not like you're always the front runner for things. It's not like you're putting yourself out there. It's not like you are seeking that attention. That attention just comes to you because based off of, because you um, have like this strong um, core, um, what do I, values, I guess, um, in, in your work, you have pride in your work and you just, you know, it's kind of like it's work. The work is its own reward. So when other people see it, um, you're just like, oh yeah, yeah, thanks. That's not a big deal, but it matters more to you what you think about you than what other people think about you. And, um, I kind of feel like there is, you know, with the seven of cups here, there's a lot of options. Now these options, they, again, like maybe they don't, you don't feel like you have a lot of options because not, maybe not a lot of them are viable, but people come to you and are like, want you on their team or they want you to do something for them or they want you to take this option and help them or they're presenting these options. So even though you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't really have a lot of options <laughs> because of this confidence and this skill and this kind of like um, personal uh, achievements that you kind of put out there, people are like, oh, I kind of want to work with you. I kind of want you, you on my team. I kind of, you know, so you are presented with a lot of things. And a lot of times you're just like, I don't know, it's not, maybe that's not for me. Um, I kind of feel like you, you know, if you use tender or if you don't, it's something that's kind of ingrained in our society. So just as an example, like if you were on tender, you'd get a lot of people who were like swiping right on you. Now, a lot of people would think that you are their match, but you are very selective. You probably don't think that they are your match. So even though you put out that vibe that you put out that vibe that you're like this like like the cool kid and you don't really care and and that actually attracts more people <laughs> with that vibe. Um and and sometimes I feel like you can get annoyed by that. Um, and sometimes, you know, the two of pentacles is about kind of like making that choice. Both of these cards are about choices. So the seven of cups, it's kind of like, wow, what, what cup do I pick? Which one do I want? Um, I don't really want the one with the ghost. I don't really want the one with the snake, even though those are options that are presented to you just based off of, um, the, the, you know, the, this like cool, confident vibe that you're projecting. You project like you have it all under control. You project that, um, like, you know what you're doing and, uh, you you know, secretly that might, you know, there might be, <laughs> it might not be true, but at least that's coming across to other people. Um, they might feel like you are indecisive a little bit, probably because they're presenting you things that you don't necessarily really want. Um, they're presenting you things based off of what they want you to do versus what you want. So that might be something that annoys you <laughs> is that you have like the, the lot of like, Hey, come and do this for me. Or I would love you to sell Amway or I'd love you to be a travel, you know, be just because they feel like you are, have it under control. You have things under control. So they would want you on your team, but it's, it's, um, you know, 
not necessarily something that you want to do. So that might be like a, a, a little bit of a problem for you. It depends on if you like the attention or if you don't. I would say the the initial CRC vibe is kind of like, hey, get out of here with that. <laughs> I don't really want that vibe. I don't really, I don't, I don't have time for, um, I don't have time for this, this garbage is, is kind of what's coming through. I'm going to pick some, pull some more cards here. I say pick, but I'm not, I'm not picking them. Never ending story. Okay. And let's see what we got here. Poised. Yeah. Poised for sure. Um, poised, confident, um, know what you're doing. That's the vibe you're getting off. I'll, but I feel like in the side, you're kind of like, like I was saying with these choices, like get out of here with that. That's not what I want. That's, you know, so I feel like even though, um, cause I almost feel like this never ending story piece right here. Um, even though you, it, this is what we have on the outside, this whole like very strength, very in control, very calm, very kind of calculated. I've got, and then you're like, oh, seriously? <laughs> On the inside here with the never ending story, like that you just, you just like, I just need a break. I just need like, like just this whole, like stop coming to me with, with all of this stuff. Now it's funny because there are people who would love to have the options that you have. And I think that's part of your confidence. And part of that vibe is that you're not afraid to say no to things that don't suit you. So that's not a knock. That's, that's actually like, you know, you just keep being you until you find what you need to do. Um, the poise though, I feel like overall there's just like, yeah, I've got this, like this, I, I've got this, I'm, I'm accomplishing this type of energy going on with you. I also kind of feel like people might bring you their drama because they feel like you have some sort of insight on that. So if you're like, why are you talking to me about this? Or it's because they think that you are some sort of, you know, we've got the King of Pentacles here. We have Circe, you, that you have some sort of insight or you're some sort of leader on these things that, that you feel like they can open up to you. Um, even though on the inside, it's like, I'm not into this drama, but that's, that's part of the, like, I think that they see that you're like a non drama kind of person. Cause like seriously, didn't put up with any of that drama. The King of Pentacles is like in control of the controllables in control of his life in control of his job. That when people have their own personal drama, they're like, wait a second, this is a person I want to talk to. It's it seems like they know what's going on. It seems like they can give me some insight here. So I'm going to bring my drama to them. Now, I feel like if they want you to be involved in their drama, you just squash it. It's not, I, I love that we've got this bubble in here because, um, you know, she's sitting on the top of an hourglass. <clears throat> I also feel like, um, <clears throat> you know, we have this mirror, so you do project back the type of energy that people bring to you. Um, <clears throat> but I feel like you filter it through a, like a very confident and positive way. That's why you are attracting people with that vibe <clears throat> to come talk to you about these things. And you're like, wait a second. Um, cause I, why am I, why am I getting this option? Why am I getting this thing? You know, why is it coming to me? Why do people think I want to be involved in this? It's, it's not that they think that you want to be involved. It's like they would want you to be involved because they think that you would make it better. Um, and you're like, no, the reason I'm making it better is because I'm staying out of it completely. Um, and I feel like you would tell people how it is, <laughs> and maybe, um, you aren't, you know, you probably not, you don't ha have to be kind all always, um, when you're, it's more of a truth kind of thing. Um, so it's not like you're being mean when you tell them things it, because you, I think you can be, the vibe is kind of like blunt, but, um, but certainly like this whole people bringing you drama and, but you knock it down. Um, it doesn't mean you, but they see that you have a heart. They see that you, um, in there, 
like really do care for other people or they they see that like your success and they kind of want that so that's why they're they're bringing this stuff for you um and they feel like especially with this poised card that you will bring joy to the situation that you will bring light to it that you will bring your confidence to it there's a lot of confidence cards the poise the crc the king here confidence so people will bring you their like hey you know i'm dating these guys what do you think about this person or this person or um i i'm looking into this job or this job what career do you think would be best for me because they trust your judgment like you're giving off this vibe that you know what you're doing even if you don't um you certainly have this confidence and this light that people um want to talk to you about about their things so if you're wondering why that's happening that's why that's happening but that's what i have for you on your vibe that you're projecting right now group one um let me know if this was vibing with you and i will see you in the next reading Hello group two, this is the terminated quartz point. And if you chose that, you're in the right spot. So for group two, the first card that comes out, we have Lady of the Lake. Um, Nimue is the name of this lady. She comes from, what is it, English tradition where heard of Merlin and Excalibur. Well, she's in that. I guess there's several ladies of the lake. Uh, Nimue, this one is Nimue though. And she meets Merlin when she's pretty young and fresh and very, very beautiful. So I feel like you have a lot of people who attract, who are attracted to you. Um, you might give off vibes of being very innocent. Um, the, the story progresses where she Merlin ends up teaching her every because she asked him to um, teaches him teaches her everything that he knows and um, she becomes a very gifted and talented sorceress um, in in the story because uh, there's several tales so the the Mallory tales um, she just decides that she doesn't want to hang out with Merlin anymore she doesn't want to be his lover and she seals him away. <laughs> so um, it, it's uh, kind of like a, a boundaries. No means no. <laughs> um, don't test you is, is the kind of vibe. So you might have like initially a very kind of trusting vibes, but capable for sure. Capable, um, you know there's just that je ne sais quoi there's just something about you the vibes that you give off um you know definitely make your intentions known uh people might project their own um ideas on you and you need to make sure that you let them know what you you want or need otherwise they suffer the consequences of your um I don't want to say anger, but you're, you know, not afraid of that. Let's see. I want two more cards here. So we've got interesting that we, because look at those images here with the five of cups and the, the lady of the lake. I think there's something very mysterious. It's interesting that this five of cups has a, um, has a mirror kind of looking behind him. Um, <clears throat> Even though I, because I kind of feel like you might be giving off a little bit of sad vibes. So it's, you know, sadness. It's, it, I don't think you're somebody who will go out and just like wear, maybe resting bitch face. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you don't have to feel like you need to smile all the time or be happy all the time. And that's okay with you. That might be a way where you keep boundaries with other people. It's just like in public, it's like you don't necessarily want other people to um, come up to you, bother you. Um, you know, you've got your own thing going on here. Um, she ends up, this Lady of the Lake ends up being like this really 
knowing all the things that um, Merlin knows. So very, very powerful. So it feels like there's there you might be intimidating to other people. Um, we've got the Ten of Pentacles and the Wheel of Fortune in reverse here. Um, you know, if you're not in a relationship or you're not <clears throat> working you know, with a partner to build a family or build a future, we might want to look at these vibes of, of what you're putting out there. Um, it might be that you're not showing interest in that. Now, if that's true, if, if you're not interested in children, if you're not interested in kids, if you're not interested in that type of thing, um, that's okay. That's totally up to you. But if you are and you're wondering why you're not getting um, options or being approached or um, wondering why people aren't taking you seriously, like you're not getting those serious relationships, um, it, it might be part of what you're projecting as a vibe. It might be part of this uh, boundary that you're, you're putting up with between yourselves. Um, they might feel like, I don't want to say you're more trouble than you're worth, but it might come across as that you're not interested in those types of things. So it's, it, they're not, you're not being approached with those kinds of offers. This kind because the 10 of pentacles you have, and you have it in reverse here. 10 of pentacles is about, you know, creating that, um, generational wealth. Um, it might be job offers as well. Uh, people think that you are kind of like um, a loner, kind of out on your own. You've got it under control, uh, maybe entrepreneurial. And you might have, like if you're looking for a job and you want to work with other people, it might be that um, they just think that you are better off doing your own thing, that you're not into into working with other people. Now, the cool thing about this Eight of Wands is if this isn't true, oh, and the, the Wheel of Fortune in reverse, is if what I just described isn't true about you, you have the ability to switch up your vibe. You have the ability to, you know, start projecting it. What you need to do is consciously think about what you're putting out <clears throat> and then start projecting that vibe so that you can you can get those offers that you are meeting the people who are are having who have the same type of um, visions for their lives that you do the same type of um, goals same type of goals because right now it feels like very um, lonely here kind of like um, a very kind of loner vibe, a very kind of like you're doing great on your own kind of vibe that you're putting out. But if that is not true and you're looking for your tribe, all you have to do is start taking what I'm saying about your vibe um, consciously and start shifting it. The Wheel of Fortune, you know, sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down, sometimes, you know, this too shall pass, things change all the time. When we have it in reverse, it's kind of like we're not really in control of our fortunes. We are kind of like um, letting luck take its course, letting the cycles take its course. Now, there are things that you can do within those cycles that put you in a position that you would rather be in versus just allowing the whatever happens to happen. And I feel like you're capable enough and you're smart enough that you can shift your focus to project and attract exactly what you want. Um, so if you are not getting what you want right now, you are very capable of getting it. You just, the vibe is a little bit off from what you're looking for and what you're what what you're attracting. Um, now, if you want to be left alone, if you want to have your own, you know, you have your thing going. You don't want other people to mess it up. Um, you're not inviting them into your life. You're not inviting. You know, you have your own kind of like 
uh, thing going on. You are secure with your family situation. You're secure with your job situation. Then I wouldn't change anything. But I do feel like this Wheel of Fortune in reverse is here to remind you that you are in control of how you are appearing. You are in control of how you you project out your vibe. You are con in control of what things you are attracting to you. You are very, very powerful. Um, and the Eight of Wands is just like, hey, if, if you want to um, roll with your crew, if you want to go find your crew, that <laughs> Eight of Wands is actually a very um, quick moving energy. Um, it means that things can change overnight and in a flash. Um, it, and it all is about just changing that kind of one thing, tweaking it, and ooh, yeah look at that tweaking it and uh, bringing it in so very interesting that we get higher power and the fates here the fates is really interesting with wheel of fortune uh, kind of just uh, repeating what I'm saying here about um, because wheel of fortune can be a very karma card about karma, about fate, about destiny, and so is the fates. And then we have higher power. I feel like there's a lot of things in your life that you can really tap into um, spiritually. I feel like there's a big reminder here, and I feel like the vibe that you're getting off, at, giving off as well, is that you are bigger than the sum of your parts. You're bigger than this earthly plane. Um, you come across as a very kind of spiritual being as well. I don't know if that's something that you're projecting, but it's something that you need to remember for sure that you we have a connection with other people. Even if you are putting boundaries around yourself, I feel like the Eight of Wands, especially in this picture here, is kind of like, you know, rolling off with your posse, um, finding those other people who are um, like-minded and that you want to surround yourself with. I feel like there's uh, just, you know, that the cards are coming in here to remind you that you are not alone because I feel like the vibe is being given off that you are and that you have no like control over anything. And I feel, you know, control is an illusion to begin with, but there is a lot of trust that is being um, put here. Um, if you feel Feel like you're being out of control if you feel like you're not attaining or reaching your goals and I know that this is a little bit off of the subject of the vibe you're putting out but you know what the cards are here their cards say what they say we put the intention out there and it's like hey but this is the message that that group two needs to um, reach you know we have got a higher power source energy, however you want to define it. Every culture defines it a little bit differently, unless you're, you know, atheist and you don't believe it at all, in, in which case you kind of do because it's usually like nature. Um, and it's working with that source energy and that higher power and kind of just um, flowing and trusting. And while I said, you know, this wheel of fortune here is in reverse, because I kind of, I, I have the idea that you feel like um, things are just happening to you and there's not much that you can do. I feel like once you, it, it's, it's almost counterintuitive, right? Once you trust and you accept, like it's, then the Eight of Wands is just that quick, quick, quick energy. Like it just how quickly the wheel can turn and things can change and it's so interesting the higher power the wheel of fortune the fates that come in here to remind us that we've got fate and karma and acceptance there are things that we cannot change and knowing that almost changes everything it's such a weird thing but there we go um, the serenity prayer comes to mind and is especially connected here to the fates card god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change the courage to change the things i can and the wisdom to know the difference there's also an element of wisdom here um, that you know that pe and people know you know 
um, that you you have this like deep knowing, this deep wisdom that you can tap into to really shift fate. And you know what? Even the Lady of the Lake, like she was, she shifted fate. <laughs> there is a lot of fate and karma here in group two. So I feel like too, a lot of people believe in karma or, you know, bringing in karma from past lives. It's interesting that we have like this mirror behind us. Um, sometimes we feel mired in that karma. Like, oh my gosh, there's nothing I can do. It's just, you know, burning off karma. But I feel like once we kind of accept it or we're just like, you know what, I, no apologies here. I am who I am. I don't have to um, believe in this negativity. I'm going to forgive myself. I feel like there's an amount of forgiveness rather than focusing like on this five of cups on the past here. I just feel like karma is something that we bring into our, in our own lives and ourselves. And I don't know about you, but me, I sometimes stay awake at night thinking about something that I said to somebody in third grade and I feel terrible about it. I feel like I'm, you know, I was a bully to somebody in third grade and I, you know, what can I do about that? And the thing is, what you can do is just send that situation positive energy, realize, you know, you are a different person now than you were, which is so connected to the Lady of the Lake. In that story, she starts off as like this really young and innocent, um, beautiful person, and she just grows in her um, awareness and grows in her ability and skills. You're not the same person that you were, so you don't have to pay for those mistakes um, of the past that that you you did um, stand up in your power and accept where you are now we have to release all the negativity and move forward and the only thing that you can do is pay it forward and just show the future your love send yourself love send yourself forgiveness you deserve it um, and I feel like these simple you know there's something here that's going to shift so quickly for you group two um, with that acceptance with that um, serenity prayer I mean the serenity prayer is all about like maybe there is some chaos here with the ten of pentacles and the wheel of fortune and feeling like it's fate and feeling like things are out of hand and feeling like you know it's sad about the past and feeling like we need to forgive ourselves but um, you know time marches on time marches forward and the the only thing that we can do is grow and evolve and become a better person and that um is how we repay you don't have to repay you know you don't owe anybody anything um sometimes things happen you know that was somebody else's karma when you were being a jerk um, in the past or in traffic or whatever and all you can do is pick things up and be better for the future and um, and maybe that opens up your vibe a little bit because these two cards seem to really feel like closed off and and it feels like with again with this eight of wands that you really want to do you know, connect deeper with other people but um, you're not quite sure how to make that happen so that interesting how that um, reading has turned. Let me know if you find that interesting as well, group two. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I will see you in the next reading. Hello, group three. This is the um, Amethyst Point. Welcome to your reading, and we are going to talk about all about your vibe and what vibe you're putting out there, what other people are picking up up. Um, so we have Persephone. Persephone is such an interesting um, character. Greek mythology. She is the daughter of Demeter. Um, she is the wife of Hades. So even though she has this really calm and beautiful um, energy, she has a lot of power really at her fingertips. Like, um, she can, I, I kind of feel like calming beasts <laughs> um, 
because you know Hades the, the god of death like that's pretty scary um, you give off this vibe that you're unafraid that um, you're uh, and there's a duality here too it's interesting this almost looks like uh, day and night but you know you you know roll with roll with the punches as it's coming in but with, with Persephone you know she rolls with the seasons and she she's the one who kind of controls the seasons not really controls the seasons but it's because of her um, kind of like this very muse energy right because Demeter makes things grow and when Hades kidnapped Persephone uh, Demeter's like I'm not gonna make things grow that was a big deal so they had to make out a deal where um, Persephone spent her time with her mother during you know like this spring and summer and then uh, this is the um, the how seasons happened um, and and then when she went to the underworld to spend time with <clears throat> her husband Hades um, that's when things uh, died off but I also feel like you give the impression that you are um, you're there for everyone. You're there for your family, like your parents. Um, you're there for your spouse. You're there for significant other. Uh, people can call on you and you are there. Um, I feel like in definitely this duality, you might have a lot of um, Gemini placements. Um, check that out. I don't want to, you know, sometimes Gemini gives the idea, it's not two-faced. Sometimes people think that Geminis are two-faced, but you've got um, a lot of talents going on. You're able to connect people um, who may not have otherwise connections. Uh, ooh, look at this justice, this Ace of Cups and this justice. Very interesting. So people love to start things with you. They see that you have a big heart. Um, they, But they also feel like you have a very sense of justice. This Five of Swords, Five of Swords is one of those cards that's better in reverse. Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles is one of the, like, it's a lovely, lovely card. I feel like it's here in reverse, um, just kind of confirming the Persephone because you know we've got this growth here but we've also got it pointed in reverse for the underworld I feel like there um, and then it's such a like independence card so you get the vibe that you like to work with others though um, you like to help others more of like a muse vibe um, I feel like it's more of a vibe of you know you really are it's not that you are interested or not interested in money, um, but you are interested in everybody finding their wealth potential and you're willing to help other people. And I feel like, and this might be an issue, group three, is that you know you you really like love people so much and you're willing to help people so much that you would do a job for less than it, your worth. So I feel like you need to really kind of see your worth. I don't know if people are necessarily that they see you and they think that they can take advantage of you. That might, you know, some predators kind of might feel like that because you project out this very giving and lovely energy. Um, I also feel like when you get involved, you, this is with the Five of Swords and the Justice, when you get involved in a situation, you're very diplomatic. You help people find common grounds. You might say things like, agree to disagree um you have uh that would be the five of swords five of swords is people fighting um they might win a battle but they lose the war or you know they just are picking at one little tiny issue and i feel like you can come in and kind of smooth over that energy um with other people you just have a very like the vibe that you have is very uh, calming calming vibe calming loving vibe and it's very loving here with the ace of cups there's a lot of love and potential like you do really like love other people and that's why I feel like sometimes you put them before yourself because I mean even in this um, story of Persephone a lot of times we don't even really know what she wants it's just a battle between her mom and her her husband so, um, but what does she want? So I kind of feel like that just, just is a message that um, sometimes you get wrapped up in so much of what other people are 
doing that you kind of might forget yourself and what you want. Um, so just <laughs> that's kind of what's coming out. Just be be aware of that, and you might not always. Um, and if you're okay with that, that's fine. I was going to say, you may not always um, accept your full worth and your full potential in a situation just because you feel like you're doing it for other people. You, you're somebody who would go above and beyond for other people because you feel like that's the right thing to do. And as long as you have that sense of justice, like that sense of justice means more to you and, and loving other people means more to you than... Um, than winning a fight or than making making money off of your friends or because you really feel connected and a friendship with um you or you give at least you give off that vibe that you really feel connected and a friendship with the people around you everybody wants you as their friend interesting you know it's interesting this not for you yeah for sure mending um, because I'm just looking at the I feel like it's really in, um, connected here to the five of swords just looking at the um, the the chess pieces the games like you don't play games that's not for you that's not what you want um, you don't it's not about winning it's not about losing you would prefer you have this vibe that you want everybody to win that you want everybody to do their best to excel you want everybody to feel good about what's going on it's not um, you don't want to play games you're not you're getting off of that roller coaster of like um, manipulation you don't I feel like, unfortunately, that perhaps, and you need to be careful about this, um, narcissists would be attracted to you because you you already are, you give that vibe off that you already give give of yourself that they, so you got to be careful of the takers. You got to be careful of the takers, but that's not for you. So I feel like um, there is a level of uh, experience that you've had with this, unfortunately, and I'm sorry about that, where you have, but it hasn't tainted you. You are still beautiful and idealistic and you still love people and you still want the best for them. And even if you have run into people who don't um, always respect um, what is good for you or don't have that reciprocal energy and who want to play games. I feel like, um, I hope that you're able to release them, that you will, um, just put out there what you need, that you, I mean, you give a, uh, people a lot of leeway in this, I feel like, but once it's gone, it's, it's gone. And that doesn't stop them from calling you. I think you're pretty easy at giving, um, uh, giving, um, forgiveness and mending here. And hopefully they learn something as well that, cause I feel like you accept people for who they are. <clears throat> beautiful quality <clears throat> excuse me and I feel like people see that about you and they see that vibe and they see that you're somebody who really like <clears throat> will give somebody a shot um, if they have if they feel like they're broken and you will help them mend I saw this beautiful um, example of this college professor who takes a $20 bill and he asks his class if anybody wants it. And they're like, yeah, I want it. Then he takes it as crisp and beautiful and brand new dollar bill. Then he takes it and he like crunches it up. He puts it on the ground. He steps on it. It's all like um, wrinkled. And then he picks it up and he's like, "Do you, who still wants this dollar bill? And everybody is, is like, yeah, I want that 20 bucks. I'll take it. It's, it's about like you see the value in people even when they have have been stepped on when they have been broken um, and you will help them mend that and that is a beautiful beautiful um, vibe group three uh, it's just you know just the caution coming out that you might have some people who would um, take advantage of that I feel like you've run across that in the in the past I feel like you give people a you know a big leash a big leeway um, sometimes they don't deserve it they don't 
Um, however, I feel like you are are open to that. So uh, if, embrace this this justice because I feel like you have a very good sense of right and wrong, what should be done, what won't be done. I feel like though you will forgive people and love them even if they're going down the wrong path. Um, however, you might say something and, and let them know. But it, it, it comes across as very genuine from you because there is that love behind it. There is that acceptance behind it. Um, and there is that kind of like, you know, people are people and you get that. You get that we make mistakes, that we're imperfect, um, but you will, are willing to work on others to just release the, the <clears throat> negativity, release that drama. So that's what I have for you, group three. <laughs> Apparently my, that's what I have for my voice as well. Uh, let me know how you, you know, if you appreciate this, if this um, vibes with your vibe, and I will see you in the next reading. Thank you.